Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and we're here today with our fifth ever vlog and just because I wanted to really just make a quick video to talk to you guys face to face uh, because I'm going to be away next week. Uh, I'm going taking a trip with the wife up to the north of Canada which is known as the Great Outdoors, uh, Timmins, Ontario. It's a beautiful area, beautiful place and they, my in-laws have a cottage there so I'm going to be there for a few days taking a much needed vacation because this has been a pretty tough year, a lot of work, just like barely taking any vacation this year so it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it and maybe I'll bring back some awesome footage of flying over water or some beautiful terrain there in Canada, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping I can bring that to you guys. So hopefully it'll be worth it um, anyway so let's talk about the stuff that I wanted to touch base with you guys about and the first thing that I wanted to talk about is in relationship to the uh, TBS race tracker and lap RF comparison review that I started uh, it's been pointed out to me that uh, one that you should keep this board right here this the board that you replace if you have one of the older units you should keep this because apparently you can hook it up with an 18650 battery and you can use this somehow as some form of relay to um, run the lights around the gate so that seemed kind of interesting i have no idea how to do that i'm not telling you guys that i know how to do this but it was pointed out to me in a comment and i think that uh, i've seen that before in a post somewhere so it's probably out there on google on how to set it up and everything like that so it might be worth keeping this board for that purpose the other thing is that um, i want to make sure that i'm being fair with both of these products and the manufacturers so i will point out that tbs has been extremely good in dealing with them with this problem that I had they replied very quickly and they shipped very quickly as well and arrived here in a couple weeks so I can't say that that was bad at all they've handled this extremely well however I have to point out the fact that it did arrive dead there's just that is the truth so moving on uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was the uh, R12 DSM which uh, just arrived and I talked about this before and my um, on my Get Good series video about gear. I talked about this being a really good um, RX to consider, and here it is. Let's uh, see if you guys can check it out here. Let's, come on, focus. It's trying to get my face, which is really annoying. All right, there we go. So this is the R12 DSM, and it's made by Radiolink. It is a diversity receiver, so it has two antennas all the way here. Mm -hmm and uh, it's a super tiny about the size of a piece of gum weighs about one gram and uh, it is s bus and ppm 12 channels uh, i'm only going to be using nine because mine is the 89 but that doesn't matter it has more channels than you need to run a quad it also has rssi so it will send back a signal to your uh, your radio and it'll vibrate if you start losing signal i'm hoping that this guy is going to work better than the other micro receiver because of the fact that it has diversity because the other one did not work very well for me i had terrible range with it and whenever the frame would flip around it would block the antenna and it would just give me a fail safe so i'm hoping this guy's going to be better because i am going to be fitting this into the rapture because it's the whole canopy design and it has like a design for two antennas coming out of the top to keep them away from the props so this is going to fit perfectly in there and uh, it's going to keep the build nice and light i'm going to be using some pretty cool components on this build too uh the thor motors and uh, we're going to talk about that pretty soon actually because the other thing that I want to tell you guys is that the uh, the Rapture has shipped. I've told you guys probably about that in a few of the other videos but if you haven't caught on uh, it has shipped. Shandronza sent them out um, a few days ago so I'm expecting to get the frame uh, when I return and as soon as I get back and I get the frame I'll do a video for you guys show you what the frame is all about what comes in the kit and uh, my impressions of it and we can talk a little bit about that and uh, I don't expect that to be too long from now because uh, I'm super excited about that build. I cannot wait to try this plus configuration thing it just seems super super cool. The other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is Betaflight 3.2. So um, I've been talking to a lot of people who have just switched over to 3.2. I've helped some people configure it and so on. And I've been using it for a few months now on a variety of hardware. And I have to say, I'm, I'm very, very happy and very impressed with it and definitely have drank the Kool-Aid like 100%. Um, I have not had any issues like these like crazy phantom, like cutting your fingers, quad just arms. I don't know. I have to say I suspect that there's something else going on that is not immediately apparent because uh, in my experience and the experience of many other people who I've talked to that have Flash 3.2, it has been working fine. However, you should always be careful with your quad no matter what. I mean, we are dealing with beta flight in the first place and like this is something that is created by a community of people and that is in constant development. So there's always a chance that something could go wrong. So treat your quads with respect and make sure that you're careful around them. And uh, especially if you have your radio dangling around you because I have totally armed my quad accidentally when bending over to go pick it up because I had the radio slung around my, my, my neck and the throttle was in the low position. So as soon as it hit my arm, 
yeah, it could have been bad, it wasn't, but um, you might want to consider a double switch arm or just be more mindful of where your radio is when you go to pick it up. Uh, so that would just be my two cents and keep trying to keep your fingers in place. But um, I definitely recommend Betaflight 3.2, especially if you're running an F4 board, uh, because you can make full use of the dynamic filters. And that has been, to me, the best solution to mid-throttle yaw oscillations that I have found to date. Uh, like the... Um, Capacitors have helped, definitely they, they help keep your gyro a little bit clean. Soft mounts have helped a great deal and I'm not sure that the if the dynamic filters will work as well hard mounted because I'd never hard mount my build anymore. But uh, this dynamic filter makes a huge difference in how the quad um, responds to that mid throttle yaw. It basically eliminates it. So uh, I definitely recommend it. Check it out, uh, do some tests, fly it around and see if you love it because a lot of people are switching over and they are loving it. And I would right now vouch for its safety, seriously. It's uh, super solid. Also wanted to mention that Betaflight 3.2 uh, configurator has um, has updated to version 3.2. Sorry, it was 3.12 before. Uh, it has updated to 3.2, which means that you can very easily now flash 3.2 on almost any board as long as you put them in DFU and have the proper hex. You no longer have to do that crazy rigmarole of installing your own fresh build of the Betaflight configurator like I showed you guys in the BF 3.2 video. So you can forget all about that. That's not necessary anymore. Just update your normal chrome app and you should be good to go to flash beta flight 3.2 so guys that's all that i wanted to cover with you guys i will see you guys next week for sure and as always thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that awesome content see you guys later